The Locavor movement may be coming to a school or daycare center near you. The legislature will consider a bipartisan measure that would facilitate relationships between farmers and school lunch programs. And the sponsor of the Senate bill, Senator Mike Goggin, joins me to talk more about it. Welcome. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. So explain the farm to school program. Well, actually, it's quite simple. It uh, allocates $2 million a year uh, for our local farmers to work with our local schools, our child care centers, uh, our home day care centers to provide uh, fresh fruits and vegetables to our, our young children. Is it remarkable to you that Minnesota is only one of 12 states that do not have this policy in place, considering that we are an agricultural state? Very surprising. Uh, you know, uh, when my kids were young and we had them at home daycare, uh, Cindy was really good about introducing new fr fruits and vegetables every week. Uh, they'd get a new fruit and vegetable to try. And my kids are now 25 and going to be 22 on Sunday, and they still, when they go to eat or whatever, they're, buying, they're getting salads, fruits, vegetables. So getting these fruits and vegetables introduced to the kids as early as possible to encourage healthy eating habits, uh, that's what it's all about. Well, and it's not just fruits and vegetables, but it's also meat products, honey, mm -hmm. beans, all of the things that can grow on our farms here in Minnesota. Yes. What are farmers saying about this? Well, actually this morning I was going through my emails and I'm getting a lot of uh, really positive emails from local farmers saying, you know, thank you so much for doing this. This is a really a good win-win situation for the schools, the ch uh, children, uh, the local economy, and the f local farmers. It just gives them that much more opportunity to, to get their uh, produce and, and goods to uh, our kids in our schools and help them uh, have a good nutritious meal. And, uh, you know, our kids in school are going to have a, a lot better attention in classrooms than that. Uh, and as early as we can possibly get this food introduced to the kids uh, you know we need to get their bodies uh, wanting to eat healthy as early as we possibly can now the bill would allocate two million dollars a year I know 150,000 of that is for a coordinator to mm -hmm. coordinate these programs what is the rest of the money spent on well that's where the uh, the schools the child care providers will uh, put in for grants for the for money to get that uh, to get reimbursed for what they spend uh, doing that and they have to work with local farmers that are uh, part of the program. Will there be some education then for the people who are preparing this food, ideas how to prepare it? Because, you know, we know how to, we all know how to open a can or make a box of mac and cheese or something, mm. but how do you make a kohlrabi? What's going to be the best <laughs> use of honey? Is there education for that? Uh, we, we intend to have some education as part of that coordinator's position will be education uh, materials and that and opportunities for the schools and the child care centers and the, and the home daycare operators uh, to, to get recipes on how to, how to work with that, uh, those different types of food. Now, so. when I was growing up, a family farm did uh, produce a lot of different products. There was a lot of variety, but farming these days is much more specialized. I mean, generally, bigger operations just one crop. This requires a diversity. Is there a new kind of farmer out there? Yeah, I kind of equate these new farmers to like the microbrewery breweries out there. Uh, these folks are coming in, they're, they're uh, doing small operations and they're very specialized and focused in what they're growing and uh, uh, this just gives us another opportunity for uh, uh, the farming community to, to grow and expand and, and uh, you know hopefully it'll go the way the microbrewery has gone. Uh, according to a press release from the National Farm to School Network, every dollar invested in a farm to school program generates $2.16 for the local economy. How does this effort actually help the local economy? Well, you've got uh, the farmers are able to sell their goods and services to, to the schools and the, and the daycare centers, and that just adds more to the economy as, as that money gets put into the, into the economy locally. And we keep it local. We buy local, we, we supply local, and it just helps generate that uh, revolving economy with that. This reminds me of the, the phrase, what's old becomes new again. Uh, our grandparents cooked this way, ate this way, and then we've kind of moved away. Is this an effort really to move back towards that more wholesome, whole-grown way of eating? Yes, it is, and, and people are, are requesting that. They're, they're wanting to go back to that, so this fits really nicely into uh, people's uh, wanting to go back to that type of food and that type of meal preparation. Um, you know, it's just uh, people want to eat healthier, and so again, 
watching my kids grow up, I want to see kids have the opportunity to, to build good healthy eating habits at an early age. As they get older, it's going to help us as far as a, a health care costs and, and, and that. Uh, people are going to hopefully start out with a really healthy lifestyle to begin with and keep that moving throughout their life. Now, outside of the cost for this measure, are there anyone, are there any groups, any people, any industries that are objecting to this? I haven't had one person object to this. Uh, no emails, no Facebook posts or anything like that. Uh, it's been very, very positive, and, and I think this is the opportune time to, to make this happen and, and do this for our, for our kids to, to start building healthy lifestyle, eating habits, and for our local farmers and our local economies. Senator Goggin, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.